So it is a very interesting week here, the second week of May, because we have not just one, but two sets of inflation data that the Fed will probably be looking at closely. So you can see here that on Wednesday, we have CPI, which has been the inflation marker that most of us, retail traders, self-directed investors, are paying close attention to because it creates market volatility quite often. And then on Thursday is the PPI, which is the measure that the Fed has been saying that they're really watching closely. So both of them are back to back and the markets may be quiet going into that period, but I wanted to take a close look at one specific market that I think actually helps lead the S&P a little bit. And that market is the Qs. So the Qs are the NASDAQ based ETF that are similar to the SPY. So the SPY is to the S&P 500 as the Qs are to the NASDAQ. And I'm gonna do a deep dive. I haven't looked at this particular set of charts in a while, and by design, I'm going to analyze them with you, going from monthly, weekly, to daily. So if you're new here, I'm Hema Reddy, and I use price, time, and momentum to boost my trading that of my tribes. If you are a tribe member, welcome back. You may notice slightly different surroundings. I am at my mom's house in New York visiting for the week. So I am keeping some tabs in the market, but making sure I get in plenty of quality time. And who knows, maybe I'll even be able to get my mom to come on camera with us. But let's get started with the Q's monthly chart. So again, I haven't looked at this particular set in a while. And as I mentioned, while I don't find it to be a direct correlation in terms of the amount of a move or the exact time of a move, I have noticed over the years that the NASDAQ tends to move a little bit ahead of the S&P. That is the main reason why I monitor it in the skinny on the markets, looking at the NASDAQ futures. Here though, we're looking at the Qs, like I said. So looking at the Qs monthly chart, we have a few things here. We have my candlesticks, that's price action. We have my favorite momentum indicator down below, and I may incorporate some forecasting or market timing as we investigate other timeframes. What I'm seeing most recently is that we are continuing this slow but steady trek higher from the November 30th low, and that is headed towards the August 31st high. So that is an important resistance I watch on the queues right here. I'm going to get the exact value, 334.42. On the support side, okay, what's underneath the current price action that's important to monitor? I see that down here at 285.19. All in all, that's just the recovery mode we're in, but we're still contained in that August range. So now I'm going to take these two levels and go to a weekly chart that has different annotations on it. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of mentally capture these two numbers and then transpose them. All right, now here's a weekly chart where I have transposed both of those levels that were on the monthly chart. So the weekly chart now has candlesticks representing one week of price action. The RSI power zones is now based on a 14 week period, not a 14 month. And the RSI power zones are one indicator, the indicator, that I have on every chart I analyze. So if you're newer to the tribe especially and you've not dug into your RSI Power Zones education, I highly recommend that you do because this will continue to help because momentum is a leading indicator. It generally turns ahead of the price action. So looking at that here, you can even see back in the mid-March period, the momentum indicator, the RSI Power Zones, made a low one week before actual price did. So that was a helpful heads up to the current move higher in. Now, if I zoom in a little bit to the recent price action, I can uncover more detailed analysis in terms of upcoming support and resistance. So we have come into resistance at 322.08. We have up ahead at 328.85. There's a wide range of support between 309.15 all the way down to the 285.19 we got from the monthly chart. And we can see that we approached that first level, skimmed it back at the end of April. 
So what this is showing me is that there is a lot of resistance coming in around this 322 level. However, the market bears have not been strong enough to really push the queues much lower. So in the short term, it looks like they are poised to climb higher and we need to look at the daily chart to see what more specific levels unfold. So what I'm gonna do now is take the levels that I see here and again, mentally kind of capture them, transpose them to a daily chart and we'll analyze there. All right, so now I've gone ahead and taken those levels from the weekly chart, transposed them to the daily chart and you can see that I've also made them slightly thicker. The reason I do that is so that I know that those levels that are the thicker lines are from a higher time frame because support or resistance derived from a higher time frame is more significant than support or resistance derived from the time frame beneath it. Okay. So now if I add any thinner lines on here, I'll know they're from the daily chart. So again, I have just transposed to daily chart. All of these past orange vertical lines you see are past forecasts I made. And if you want to learn more about my forecasting techniques, that's in my lost forecasting trading system. Right now, I'm going to focus in on what I'm seeing on the daily chart. And here we see that there are a few things uh, we can bring into play. So one is a little bit of forecasting. So using forecasting techniques, you can see that I now have this intersection here at about 345 on May 30th. So right now so long as the queues stay above the april 25th low there's a forecast for them to trade up into 345 by the end of the month now my forecast techniques are powerful but they don't hit the nail on the head every single time the great thing is that in the lost forecasting system i teach you exactly how to determine forecast importance and be able to use them even when they miss all right so now let's look at what's going on with momentum to see if there's any additional clues. Well, I do see that we have been lifting up from the bull support power zone on the last two major swing lows in this market. So that's also a positive in terms of the likelihood of continuing higher on the queues. Again, with potential for wiggle room back towards 425. I do think that this might stay quiet over the next couple of days and pick up more when we get this release of this inflation data. And I'm also seeing that we can bring in some other shorter term support and resistance. So I'm just going to put the levels in these labels. I will move to the left side of the chart so that it's easier to see everything that might be sort of piled one on top of the other. Again, my support is pink and my resistance is blue. How I'm determining these levels is taught in a variety of my different courses. I'm just demonstrating right now so that you can get the essence of the analysis and be able to use it. And there we have it. So these are the levels that I would be watching real close if you are trading the cues. And again, let me make it so that you can see the weekly levels are off to the right. The daily levels that I've added in are off to the left here. And right now there is a bit of consolidation around this 322.08 that was a quite important resistance level. So all in all, the queues are on track to trade higher. We have a forecast out for the end of the month. Be careful about this 310 support area. It may be an area where we see the market uh, find some weakness if it pulls back here and breaks lower. And if that happens, right, that's the alternate scenario. It's not what I think is going to happen, but it could happen. If it does, then we have two major support levels beyond that to monitor, all in combination with the RSI power zones and market timing. I'm always looking at all of these things simultaneously, whether it's momentum, market timing, or all the ways I look at price action, like candlesticks or GAN trading patterns. So with time and practice and your studies laying upon each other, you will start to look at the markets the same way too. And the best way, guys, to kind of get to that level is just getting the reps, right? Your muscles grow in the gym because you do reps, so you do have your weights, and it's just a matter of time and repetition. It's the same thing with the charts. So I invite you to 
stay on top of this information I'm sharing here in these videos. Those of you who are members, those of you who are members, definitely join me in monthly group coaching live. Since I'm visiting family this week, uh, the next one is going to be Wednesday, May 17th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That is not changing. We're 100% set there. You'll see invitations to members coming out uh, early next week. And I will catch you later closer to the release of the important inflation data this week.